Thank you very much for the lovely introduction. Happy to be here. And you just heard a lot about Athabasca uranium. So let's actually take you to Athabasca and let's look at some uranium. It's just some of the highlights of the company. Again, Accio, that's our high grade uranium discovery that we made in the Athabasca. We call our exploration process Athabasca 2.0, and I'll explain that very quickly. Since we made our discovery in September 2021, we've drilled 30,000 meters on Accio. And right now, we're currently drilling for another discovery on our catharsis project. We've got $20 million in the bank. We have to spend 12 million of that this year, so that means we have to drill a lot. Hence, we will continue to advance our Accio project, but we are also exploring four other projects in search for a new discovery. One of the key takeaways about Accio is that we have near surface basement hosted uranium mineralization. That's important for this area of the world in the Athabasca because most of the all of the mills in the Athabasca were built off open pits. This has open pit potential with mineralization starting at 25 meters beneath the surface and a second zone of 32 meters beneath the surface. Uh, myself, I've been in the industry since 2006. I've been part of a number of big discoveries, most notably for being chief geologist behind NextGen Energy's aero discovery. Uranium fundamentals have been talked about a lot here, so I won't get into that. But let's talk about Athabasca 2.0 because that's very critical in what we do and why we do. If you see the two colors there in rock type, sandstone and yellow, basement rock in, in pink. The sandstone is basically like walking on the beach, soft sand filled with water. This, that sand is now solidified, but still filled with water. So if you look at the dashed line in the middle, everything to the left, you're looking that way, everything to the left hand side, you can see a lot of red in those deposits there. That means they have gone into production. Anything gray has not gone into production. The takeaway from this slide is that the more sandstone you have, it's harder to put those mines into production. And that's because of the water issues that we have in the sandstone. The only two that are highlighted as being in production with, with sandstone cover, Cigar Lake and MacArthur River, are both massive deposits. They were both over 300 million pounds, both over 20% when they started grade or started mining. Those are the type of deposits that you need in this area. If you remove the problem of water by, by making the sandstone thinner and having more shallow mineralization, such as the deposits in the middle, you can mine those at much lower grades and smaller sizes as open pits. If you remove the sandstone completely, you can mine these at even lower grades and even smaller sizes. So when we set out about, when we set out to, to, move, to move base load forward, this was the strategy. We said, we do not want to find a discovery. We want to discover a mine. Big difference. Anybody can find these type of deposits. These ones are much harder to find, but that's where your economics are. These are the ones that go into production. So if you note, all of our projects are outside of that sandstone, conveniently located uh, along major structures. This is our Accio deposit so far. Mineralization starts as shallow as 25 meters, goes down to about 200 meters, 110 on average. Our discovery hole hit mineralization at 320 meters depth, but we've never followed that up. That's a game plan for this year. You can see some of the stats there, and we do have numerous intercepts of what we would call high-grade uranium being greater than 0.5%, so greater than 5,000 ppm. Global average grade for uranium is about 1,000 ppm, 0.1%, so much higher. Just a quick schematic of what a cross-section looks like through Accio. 25 meters of overburden, that's not mining. Overburden is the stuff that the glaciers left behind. Those are soft sediments, boulders, things like that. You don't mine that stuff, you, you move it. It's earth moving exercise. Once you get through that, then you're at the, then you're at the, go back. Then you're at the, the basement rock contact and you can start your mining operation. At least that's the idea. Just a quick summary of Accio. So we have completed 30,000 meters since its discovery in September 2021. You can see some of the, the highlight drill hole intercepts, 0.9% over 31 meters, and that starts at 70 meters true vertical depth. There's your typical Athabasca grades that people love to see, close to 2% over 12 and a half meters, again, very shallow. So we've got all the right ingredients for typical Athabasca style of mineralization. We love Accio so much, we're definitely going back to it this year. We've got 12,000 meters planned 
trying to get to, we're trying to advance Accio into a resource category by the end of the year. We're hoping to, we're hoping to have enough meters and density drilling completed to reach an indicated NI43-101 mineral resource. So we do have a few more zones that we have to continue drilling. We have, ex we have strike extensions still open for additional discoveries, one of which where we left off with a drill hole that had eight meters, 1% over eight meters. We have the depth extent that we're gonna follow up as well. We'll be doing some ground geophysics to try to, look, to, try to define the structural nature of, uh, <laughs> we'll be doing a ground geophysical survey to investigate the structural controls of mineralization and tar targeting that with, with diamond drilling. We're also gonna be looking for unconformity mineralization. So unconformity is that contact between the sandstone and the basement rocks. That's the environment where you typically get your 5% and your 20%. We have really strong anomalies that are synonymous with, with unconformity deposits across the Athabasca Basin on our project. So we'll be putting a lot of effort into hopefully making another discovery along there. That's what Athabasca uranium looks like. It's very beautiful stuff. But as mentioned, we're also looking to make a new discovery. So a lot of, a lot of our plans this year, not just on Accio, but just over half of what we want to do this year is on Accio. The other half will be on exploration. Again, on four different projects, starting with our catharsis project, which we are currently drilling. This project had never been drilled before until we drilled it for the first time last year. We liked what we saw then, we still like what we see now. We started out with 2,000 meters, loved what we saw in the first three holes, saw the potential of the project, and decided to increase our meterage to 4,000 meters in attempt to fast track a new discovery. In May, we'll be going to our Bear project, which again, we have never drilled, but previous operators drilled along this structure here, and they did intersect anomalous radioactivity. Our target area is right down here where we have overlapping geophysical anomalies, typically what we drill that lead to great structures and alteration and uranium mineralization in some events. But being on a fertile corridor, we do believe that this has the potential as well for to host a deposit. So that will be conducted in May, 1500 meters. Continuing on with the exploration strategy, again, Accio is up here. If you follow this blue line down, that is a superstructure. That is a massive structure. It's a scar on the face of the earth. You can see it from satellites. It's actually quite impressive. But Accio is at the north end of it. To the south end of it, we have similar geophysical anomalies to what we've drilled previously. And we do believe that this structure, which already hosts mineralization, has the ability to host more. So we're putting another, we're putting another 4,000 meters into this area in hopes for yet another discovery. Our shadow project, we will not be touching this year, unfortunately. Exploration plan, so this is everything all summed up that I've just talked about. You can find this on our website. It's over 20,000 meters of diamond drilling, very active, drilling now, drilling through to the end of the year. So we'll, we should have results and news continuously flowing. 133 million shares outstanding, I still consider that to be quite low. 40 million warrants and options, share price around that 30 cents, market cap around that 40 million, but we do have 20 million in cash. Like I said, we have to spend 12 million this year, so that's a great problem to have. We love to drill, we love to explore, we love to find uranium mineralization. Insiders own about 10% accumulated, Sprott ETF owns another 10%, and then basically brokers and retail have the remaining 80%. This is our board management, a bunch of good looking guys. And Baseload is part of the org group of companies which have been very successful in the last 12 months. American Eagle Gold, for example, was, is a company that their last result had 900 meters of 1% copper equivalent. Beautiful number. Another company that is not on here is Wally Resources, who just recently announced yesterday 45 grams per ton over 32 meters. So absolutely wonderful, very successful group of companies. Thank you.